I would like to welcome the one and only the fearsome Meg Erber. We all know her as the sales ninja, but she's so much more at SNS Activewear to regale us with a an amazing SKUCon story, the first one of the day. Meg. No pressure. No pressure. Yeah. For those of you who don't know me, I'm from SNS Activewear. I'm an outside sales manager. I turned 40 this year. I am 89% Scottish. I'm a US Navy veteran. I'm also a cancer. I like long walks on the beach and ripping people's arms off. So now that that's out of the way, let's get inspired. So I'm going to try and paint you guys a picture. OK, uh, I'm just going to come out and say it. I was not a cute kid. I was actually pretty ugly. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. OK, yeah. So. I mean, my mom told me I was beautiful, but that's kind of her job. I was this awkward, awkwardly skinny where, you, you know, your joints look knobby. I had buck teeth until I was old enough for braces. And then I had braces well into my junior year of high school and ears. Oh, my God, the ears. It took me till I was an adult to grow into them. I still don't wear hats normally. So, um, so I was one of five siblings. I had four brothers. So I grew up wanting to do everything that my brothers did. I played sports year round. I really wasn't great per se, any of them. I just wanted to do all of them. And I'm pretty sure I remember throwing a temper tantrum when I was uh, when I was little because I wasn't allowed to run around the backyard without my shirt on because my brothers could and I couldn't. So I always felt like I had something to prove being the only girl. So after high school, I made my parents sign off so I could join the Navy. So fast forward to my mid twenties, because I could talk all day. I could talk for hours of how I left home when I was 17, joined the Navy, saw the world, but I only have five minutes, so I'm gonna just keep going. <laughs> so I was a single mom. I had two small children. Uh, I had actually just started in this industry and I was making like $8 an hour. And I really wasn't in a good place in my life. I was the heaviest I'd ever been. And I really wasn't happy professionally. I mean, it's I was just you know working from home, just doing this, minuscule job. I really needed something in my life. I needed a purpose. I needed something new, a change. And then I found Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I can honestly say that Jiu Jitsu saved my life. I found tools that I never knew that I had. You know, the, the way you have to retrain your entire way of thinking, your mentality, your fight or flight instincts, you know that saying, you, you fake it till you make it. Well, you can't fake your way through jujitsu. If you mess up and you get caught in a triangle, you tap or you nap. It's as real as it can get. And that has made me a better person. It's made me a better woman, a better mom. It's constantly showing me where I need to improve in my life. And I will say that up until that, my you know, this point in my life, jujitsu has actually been the most challenging obstacle, most challenging lesson I've ever had to learn. It's actually one of the most difficult things a person can do. And because of the trials and tribulations and the hard lessons that I learned, it has helped me to adapt. It's helped me to evolve for everything in life. I became not only a healthier person mentally, but physically because nothing can make you face reality like jujitsu. It became a vehicle for developing my overall potential. Um, Joe Rogan actually talked about this when he received his black belt. He said, in life, we can distort our perception of things in order to make ourselves more comfortable, in order to make ourselves accept where we are. And there are a lot of people out there that are running around in life and they're just full of crap. You just can't be full of crap when you do jujitsu. It's impossible to be full of crap because the reality of it is it, it comes at you and it's purest form possible, a life or death struggle using your determination, your focus, your um, your mind, your techniques, your training over and over and over again. So I've taken this knowledge, I've taken this wisdom that I've gained from jujitsu and I have applied it to the real world. And through this learning, I'm sorry, through this journey of learning Brazilian jujitsu, I've gained so much confidence personally and professionally I stopped allowing other people's agendas from being part of my story. So if there's one thing that I can leave you guys with, it's to find something that you're passionate about and use it to inspire others. It's it's the best way you can because you are yourself, you find yourself. And if you're passionate about it, people want to hear what you have to say. They want to listen. So 
thank you guys so much for having me here. I just, I'm, thank you. Thank you, Meg. Thank you so much for sharing your story. It takes a lot of courage and it takes uh, <laughs> vulnerability. And we're very thankful for you doing this. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, right. everybody.